Hello, my name is John Nagoski. I have been an English teacher for 20 years. I'd like to introduce you to my channel, English with Subtitles. Yellowstone, Wyoming, as read by John Nagoski. In the spring of 2003, strange things began happening in America's most famous national park. The tallest geyser in the world, which can go 50 years without erupting, burst into life, spraying columns of superheated water hundreds of feet into the air. Not long after, a group of five bison collapsed and died, victims of poisonous fumes from below the ground. Satellite pictures revealed that something ominous was happening beneath the earth. On the internet, Unfounded rumors spread that a supervolcano eruption so large that it only occurs on average every 700,000 years was about to blow. If Yellowstone experiences another super eruption, could the United States survive? The last supervolcanic eruption occurred 74,000 years ago. An explosion so large that it could wipe out a civilization. A single supervolcano explosion is a million times bigger than Hiroshima. Regular volcanoes eject millions of cubic feet of ash and debris. Supervolcanoes eject billions. Regular volcanoes can throw ash over an entire state. The ash from a supervolcano could blanket half the United States. Supervolcanoes are real events. Over 20 have been recorded in the history of the Earth, and over half of these happened in North America. But where will the next supervolcano erupt? Many scientists now believe that an active supervolcano exists under Yellowstone National Park prompting this not-so-trivial question. If Yellowstone erupted today, could North America survive? Yellowstone National Park, 3,400 square miles of protected wilderness, is situated mostly in northwest Wyoming. The hot springs and geysers have attracted tourists for over 100 years. Unknown to them, deep beneath the beautiful landscape lies a hidden terror. Thirty times more heat pours out of the ground in Yellowstone than anywhere else in the Rockies. Scientists had always assumed that the heat came from an extinct volcano that died long before the last ice age. Then, on August 17, 1959, a major earthquake changed that view forever. The quake triggered a giant landslide at Hebgen Lake to the west of the park. Eighty million tons of rock broke off a mountain and crashed down onto a campsite. The quake killed 28 campers and 19 of their bodies were never found. It was the deadliest earthquake to hit the mainland United States since 1933. Since then, Yellowstone has become a laboratory. Geologists covered the park in seismometers. When they examined their data, they found Yellowstone averaged over 25 earthquakes a week. It was the most seismically active area of the United States outside California but no one knew exactly why. A thick layer of ash and debris covered the bedrock, and it must have come from the volcano. All of these materials erupted together in a volume accumulating to about 250 cubic miles. Several miles beneath every volcano is a magma chamber, an area of molten rock. In the case of a supervolcano, the magma chamber is huge, tens of miles in diameter. When the pressure in the chamber gets too great, 
the magma erupts and the ground above collapses into the partially empty chamber, creating a giant depression in the earth, a caldera.